everyone. Welcome to Heart Tea Ranch. My name is Tammy Yost Wilden, and this is the Winter Riding Series. So today I'd like to introduce you to T.W. Chill. Chill is a three-year-old Canadian warm blood bred by Two Willows Equine of Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. So check in the description. I'll give you a link to their website. You can check out their gorgeous horses. They're one of our favorite breeders. So um, Chill has been lightly started under saddle and as winter approaches, it gets harder and harder to get consistent rides on the young horses because of the weather. And I think you can probably hear we have some wind going on today. It's making this arena creaky. It's spooky. And the reason I'm still videoing is because this is the reality of riding in the winter, in the north anyway. So today for the, the first of our in hand series, I'm gonna teach you how to explain to your horse how to respect your space. And when we're talking about a spooky environment, this is a perfect example of a time when you can easily get run over or drug around by your horse. So Chill has the ground school, fund, ground school fundamentals down, but we're bringing him in here in inclement weather to see if we can maintain that discipline. So number one, this is a thumbnail sketch of the skills that we teach in our ground school series. So if you're gonna go to hearttranch.com at any point and check out the courses, by spring of 2021, we're gonna have an in-depth ground school course to teach you step-by-step step how we achieve this kind of control. But for today, I'm gonna to go through it. I think it's still stuff that you can apply with your horse, even if you haven't been through ground school. So number one, I want a horse to respect my space. So the first thing that I teach my young horses, even the, the first haltering, is to get out of my space. So I like to use a rope halter with a 10 foot lead rope and a four to five foot in hand whip. So the first skill that we teach is back out of my space. And I'm gonna warn you now, if you are not accepting of a, applying reasonable pressure to a horse to maintain your space, then you probably should stop the video now and, and go to another trainer because at the end of the day, my safety is more important than um, not applying enough pressure to cause this horse to, to back out of my space. So he's crowding me here. I don't like that. I want at least an arm's length. So he's too close. So I'm going to bring my whip up, exert a little bit of energy, and when he backs away, I stop. He already gets this program, so it's not gonna take much to back him up. And again, I bring my energy up. As soon as he rocks out of my space, I relax again. I want him to back up a little bit more. Perfect. If he were not to do that, there's two ways I could achieve him getting out of my space. Number one, I could tap him on the nose with the handle of the whip. I don't use the lash because you could easily get an eye. I just want to bring my energy up and I will reach out and touch him on the bridge of the nose if he doesn't back up. The licking and chewing means he ex uh, totally understands what I just asked him to do. No, I don't want him in my space. No, I don't want you in my space. If you don't want to touch your horse on the head, you can also take your handle of your whip, ask him to back, and if he doesn't, you're gonna to touch him in the chest. There is a risk of being struck by a horse that overreacts to that. So for that reason, I'm very careful about the, touching him in the chest with the whip. My personal preference, it may work for yours better than touching him on the nose, so you have that choice. So first, that's our first step, is stay facing me and back out of my space. The next step is right there, you see him want to leave, to go sideways. So I'm gonna get a little bit more facing the camera here. I want this horse to stay straight. So if I have my rope in my left hand, my whip in my right, I can reach down and bring him back to center so he can't escape. I could also switch hands and use the whip with my left hand, okay? If I'm right-handed, it may be a little bit easier to control the rope with my right hand. So the next skill that we worry about is moving the shoulder. Now I've achieved the space that I want between me and the horse, I'm gonna defend that. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is actually move the shoulder. So when we're moving the shoulder, think about it like he is the arm on an analog clock. His hindquarters are in the center. I am on a track that is the numbers around the outside of the clock. So right now, I want him to shift a number over. I'm gonna move the shoulders, his nose leads, and he steps over, okay? I don't care that he moves his hindquarter. He's a baby and I'm not concerned about it. If you don't like your rope laying on the ground, I'm comfortable with it, but if you don't want it on the ground, you can fold it in half. Don't coil it, it's really easy to get tangled up in your rope if you coil it and stick an arm through it. Now, he's nervous because it's creaky in here. So I'm gonna give him something to do. I'm gonna say, no, you can be spooky, but you're not going to step in my space. Pointing the way I wanna go, bringing his shoulder. Pressure, release. This is a time you can switch if you can't reach them. Take the handle of the whip and use the lash. Pressure, pressure, release. When he crosses over, we release. Pressure, release. Pressure, release. I give a little jiggle on the halter to stop his feet and once again reinforce out of my space. So there he spooked at the creaking, flopping building, right? But he didn't jump into my space. That's the goal, is that they respect your space enough, they can do whatever they want out there, but they're not gonna jump on top of you, okay? We're gonna go the other way, switch my rope, turn my body, and again, I want this whip to be a straight line through his shoulder to that hind leg, Oh. So now he's starting to drift, and this is something that horses do when they're nervous, okay? I'm gonna shorten my rope, and I'm gonna make sure he stops his feet. One step, stops his feet. Another step, stops his feet. I'm gonna reach up and pet him, that was really a good boy, okay? Shoulder touch if he doesn't move over. Oops, he's in my space. I want to back him back out. Good. So when they're doing that, good boy. The next thing that I like to do is apply that leading. So we all are handling our horses, whether you're riding them or not, take 10 minutes out of your day and do this leading exercise. I'm going to drive him rather than lead him, okay? So I'm gonna ask him to move his shoulders over, move his shoulders over out of my space, there. So he is over in his space and I'm in my space. So I have a circle set up of cones here to give me something to aim for. I'm putting the horse on the track of the 20 meter circle my whip is down if he's good. If I feel him crowding my space, I raise the whip. And you notice it's lateral because I can control his shoulder or his haunches depending on what I want to do. All of my horses learn this before I ride them. He's licking and chewing, starting to relax. It's good. Now I'm going to ask him to halt. I'm going to give a little jiggle of the rope. Good boy. Send him forward again. I don't mind if he looks to the outside of the circle, but I do not want him to crowd me. We're gonna halt, 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 bump until he does it. Good boy. We're gonna move him on again. Halt. And I, the halt is for your benefit. It's not a voice command for the horse. So I'm gonna do it without the voice now just to show you what it looks like organically. If he tries to swing his butt out, I'm gonna step over here and put it back. I want him to halt straight, not fading out. And I'll reach up and pet him. 
with the whip to let him know it's not a weapon. Changing direction, he already understands how to move his shoulders over. So here we go again, this way. Walking also gets the horse, a young horse, used to seeing you out of both eyes because when you step up on a young horse, he's crowding me, I'm gonna tap him over. Get up on a young horse, the most likely time you're gonna get bucked off is the first time they look at you out of a new eye. Meaning if you're getting on the left and their head is bent around and then they switch eyes and look at you out of the other eye, sometimes they'll panic. So I want him equally responsive on this side. There he goes. Picks his shoulder up, nose a little bit to the inside of his shoulder here. I'm gonna tap the rib and over he goes. Wherever I touch this horse, he's gonna move over. Sometimes I don't even have to touch him. Good boy. Just the energy of me raising my hand is enough. So now we're gonna do some halts. Notice I drop my whip hand. He, if you're gonna have it up like this, they're not gonna wanna stop. You're still applying energy. Now I don't like that he was crooked. So we're gonna do that again. Want him to halt. Keep little bump on the halter until he settles his feet. I'm staying in position on him, not letting him shift away from me, meaning I'm not locking my feet and letting him drift away. Whoa. Whoa. And I'm gonna come back here to his side because I want him to halt with me on this side. Not that I get in front of him and force it to happen. Ask him to halt again. Ask him to halt again. See, I'm just staying in position and quietly repeating until I achieve a halt. So he's a little more likely to want to face up on this side than he is on the other side. So this is information that I'm filing away. Another thing you can do is come over to a fence. Now this is where you really have to defend your space because it's spooky. He doesn't like that creaky side of the building. Good boy. So I'm ready to defend my space if I need to, but he has to stop straight because the fence is there. This is a little more risk of getting jumped in the middle of here, but the reason I have my whip up while I'm asking him to halt is because he was trying to come in with his shoulder. So I'm saying, no, you're not allowed to come in here. So this is really just shaping your horse's body in a very specific way. The reason I have cones or along the fence is so that you know exactly where you want their feet to go. It's not random. It's very easy to get out of position and really have the horse controlling this uh, direction without you even knowing it. The other thing here is I don't want him rushing. I want him going exactly the speed that I'm going. Here he licked his lips. Good boy. Corrected that speed. He understood it. We're going to do another little halt. Better. Okay, this is information I'm taking away and we will definitely be working on in the future. So this is a very simple exercise that every single horse that we have of any age has to be able to accomplish. It's an easy way to maintain respect in the winter on days when you don't want to ride. So thanks for watching. Be sure and hit that Heart T Ranch brand at the bottom of the screen to subscribe so you don't miss a single video in our winter training series. Until next time, I'm Tammy Yost Wilden. See you later.